presentation to summarize some recent work. Um, let me share my screen. One second, please. If I switch to yeah, I can see that. Mode. Is that look yeah, good? Looks good. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Um, so we um, worked recently on a um, climate kick um, funded project um, called Smart District Data Infrastructure, uh, which was a follow up on some work we did um, on smart districts and uh, smart cities um, with several districts around, um, around Europe, um, working with local stakeholders to try to um, support them in um, introducing um, sustainable interventions in, um, in their district from um, physical infrastructure to behavior change, um, investments, um, planting trees, um, etc. cetera. Um, and that was a very um, interesting um, experience because we got to talk to a lot of these um, key decision makers in these districts um, and uh, with several local stakeholders, uh, from energy companies or builders, developers, um, transport operators, etc. cetera. Um, and a common theme in, in those discussions was that more data was necessary to make, to make better decisions. And um, from that, we um, started this um, SDDI project um, to, to build that infrastructure that a district could use and apply uh, to visualize data uh, from different sources and to support their decision-making process. Um, and we, worked in uh, in London with uh, the LLDC, the London Legacy Development Corporation, which is responsible for the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park in, in East London, uh, the development and the management and operation of the park and, and the development of a new uh, neighborhood in, in London. Um, to be honest, a few of the slides that are coming up could have been the backdrop for Brian's introduction talk on the need for um, data infrastructure and interoperability. Um, but I'll, I'll briefly talk you through um, what, we, what we've worked on and our, our vision there. Um, the, um, the overall idea is that there would be some infrastructure in place that different actors could access, whether that's a developer or local government or um, utility operator or um, general um, public um, citizens or, or other people interested in a site um, and that they would have access to some different applications um, on, on, on city planning, on engagement, on air quality, on weather, on energy refurbishments, um, etc. Some, some dashboards, some different ways to interact with the district and with the data. Um, and to use data that comes from different sources from, from, from data sets that are provided, um, as well as from real-time sensors. Um, and um, of course, the challenge is to bring all that together because these, these data sets come from different providers, there's different standards in, involved. Um, so the fundamental idea here is to have a, a register um, of those different data sets. No, no data sets are uploaded to this platform, it, it just acts as a, as a, as a, a catalog service um, to link um, these different applications with these data sets where we need it. Um, and what is key here is that we use a 3D city model in the top right here, virtual district model um, that um, is, is based on, um, on the real district, a 3D visualization of that using semantic data to represent not just the shapes, but also what those shapes mean. So um, we can um, annotate and tag these, um, these data shapes with, with, with additional information on, on what these objects represent. And the idea then is to develop a suite of tools that can make use of that um, and that could um, simulate people's flows or that could look at potential um, energy efficient improvements in, uh, in a district um, and to visualize that through this 3D model with the underlying data sets there. Oh, oh that was the stop button rather than next button. Apologies. Hopefully it's back again. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I just... It's okay. the mouse, but it just happened to be above the stop sharing <laughs> button. 
Um, so the idea that that we not just implement all these things ourselves, but to use standard interfaces between these different frameworks, and uh, there's a few examples of that later. Um, so basically, yeah, we want to hide that complexity of individual um, um, languages and data formats from the users, so that they are able to access that through um, a single interface um, and use this data to make to make decisions. Um, so whether that's data from weather stations or, or maps or energy, smart meter data, et cetera, that, that is, um, is accessible to them in one framework. Um, and here's an example of some of the interfaces that, that have been integrated in this. Um, so for example, we worked with um, NG, a local energy company that runs the district heat network and uh, supplies the, um, the venues as well as the, the residential areas in uh, Olympic Park with energy. Um, so they have a platform for smart meters, so real-time energy metering data comes through that, but it's, it's in their own uh, protocols. So we have created an interface that you can access that from different implementation um, applications uh, without needing to know exactly how, what language those different things speak. So there could be some weather data, um, tweets on the park, events that are happening, um, data on uh, from, the, uh, from the environment. Um, they installed some bat sensors as a, as a proxy for air quality to, to, to monitor activities of, um, of bats flying around the park. Um, so all those kind of data sets are, uh, can be integrated. Um, authentication is, is key, of course, because not everybody ha should have access to all levels of this data, um, similar to, to what Brian said earlier. And um, the, um, a user that's not logged in may just be able to see the maps and, and the visualization of that. And a user with a, a very general account, like a Google account, may have access to some additional data, like the weather data and, um, and more secure data on smart meters would need to be with an individual access from a specific uh, user account. Um, so I, I'm afraid I can't give an, a live demo here uh, right now, but this is kind of what it looks like. So a 3D model, a bit like, like Google Earth, but these are all um, objects represented in semantic um, 3D um, attributes. And um, yeah, we can, we can work with that. We can reason with those data sets. Um, and clicking on buildings then gives you access to the data that is available for them. And that is data that can be combined from different sources as my next figure shows. The, um, so this is a, a simple slot over a, a couple of days where we put uh, out the, um, some of the energy consumption from some of the venues on the park, the aquatic center and um, Copper Box, um, another large venue. Um, and you can map that against say um, the temperature profile in the area of the outside temperature. Um, as well as whether there are any events going on. So all those data sets, a bit similar maybe to what we saw earlier, have been added to the platform by a user linked to that, um, to that catalog service. Um, but then they have also been linked specifically to a spatial location in, um, in CTGML. So the building shape is then linked to an event um, CSV file, just a list of dates and, and, and events that take place. Um, and that energy data is linked to a specific location. So you can then use the, um, yeah, the, the map to point at buildings and then to extract automatically the data that is available for that location. Um, here are a number of products that have been developed as part of this project. And uh, I must say that uh, most of the implementation was done by our, our colleagues in TU Munich in, in Germany, who um, have made uh, made a lot of those components available as part of our, our project. Um, several of these, of course, have been developed by others, but, but this is uh, hopefully a useful overview of some that can be uh, reused in, in other contexts too. Um, and on the top here, the 3D City DB was developed before this project, but that's a uh, uh, a way to visualize in a web browser this um, city GML data using the Cesium uh, browser to, to display that. I um, don't know how much time I have. I was um, read a couple of slides on another case study, but maybe the, the yeah, 
Keep going. Yeah. A couple more minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So just quickly, I maybe can share the slides um, afterwards. Um, but basically, this is, um, I guess, I did um, with colleagues in, in Beijing uh, looking at uh, redeveloping um, an area around a train line that was um, coming into the center of Beijing overground, uh, but as part of redevelopment, uh, was put in a tunnel. Um, and that line was kind of cutting through the neighborhood. Um, this is often the case, of course, with those large infrastructure projects and the potential for that to be uh, redeveloped site around there. So worked with a um, PhD candidate who's, who's just uh, just graduated now in, in urban planning to use data and models to simulate um, activities around that site. Um, we build an agent-based model of the population of that district using some data on, um, on, on the land use and points of interest in a synthetic population. So in, in the previous case, we've worked with real data and here it is a synthetic population, but that's set up from real um, um, social demographic data for this district. Um, and then data on time use surveys to, to create activity patterns for agents to, to act on. So we could then simulate what would happen in that district um, and make changes to the layout, um, so modify the input date and then to see what the response of that would be. And then we pipe that into a, an additional model um, that would then calculate emissions coming out of that, um, uh, out of that area and, and look at the local air quality. Um, so we, we um, yeah, use tools like QGIS to prepare the input data, um, then look at different scenarios on what could happen with that railway line, um, look at data on the activity patterns to generate that synthetic population. And from that could generate these, these trips. So very much um, yeah, data driven from the physical infrastructure to the behavior um, to, to put that together. Um, and to keep it, keep it quick, I'll, I'll go through this rather um, fast, but we, we then compared to measured traffic volumes on these streets with the simulated data. And um, with the help of Mark Settler, who I believe has a presentation later in this session too, um, we compared some of the local taxis from the DD taxi fleet with the model so that we could validate uh, some of these um, locations um, where we had speed and, and, and count traffic count data. Um, and then to test different designs and see what, what impact that has on mobility and on people's movement around these cities. And from there, look at the impact on, um, on emissions and, and local air quality. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that for, uh, for here um, as an overview, but yeah, I wanted to, to stress that, that we, yeah, we work in our group on developing these large scale simulation models of, of cities and um, yeah, they're, they're very data hungry. And um, in this last case study, um, there was a lot of manual work in joining up all these different data sets on the population and on the land use and uh, on vehicles, etc. Um, and uh, yeah, doing that operationally directly live from a data integration platform would be a very good way forward. So not just visualizing the data as, as I demonstrated firstly in the Olympic Park, uh, but then to pull that data out and to populate uh, models that can run uh, for different scenarios.